Almost everyone on TikTok, especially the creepy side of TikTok, has heard this song play. But not many people know the sad and disturbing story behind this song and its creator. Tiptoe Through the Tulips was released in 1968 by American musician Tiny Tim. When the song was first released, it didn't have the same creepy connotations surrounding it that it does now. This would be changed during the last live performance of the song. On September 28, 1996, he suffered a miniature heart attack while performing at a music festival. After this incident, his doctors would tell him that he was no longer healthy enough to perform on stage. He ignored the advice of doctors and scheduled another event at a women's club in Minnesota the very next month. Right before the performance, he would tell his wife that he wasn't feeling well. Despite this, he went on stage. While performing the last number of the evening, he suffered a major heart attack and died on stage in front of the crowd. The song he was performing was Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Humanity's Darkest Pictures, Part 7 Josephine Rosenthal's Head The mummified head of the first nun ever recorded to be possessed. The blood and skin have been analyzed and found to contain unique genetic traits. They were attributed to a rare lineage. Both Josephine and her mother were hermaphrodites, able to spontaneously self-impregnate and give birth to children, although the condition would eventually kill them both. What's the new evidence now? A satellite photo near Sao Paulo. All right, this I want to see. Let's take a look at that. Uh, it was taken by NASA, and uh, it caused some immediate concern amongst the environmental community. All right, first blush, it looks like a giant oil spill, right? That was the fear, yeah. You know, there's a lot of offshore drilling along the Brazilian coast. Fortunately, though, it turned out to be a swarm of microbes known as Marionecta rubra, and uh, they're not hazardous to marine life. Why was this brought to your attention, then? Well, during the initial investigation, the agent who was studying the swarm uh, noticed something out in the water. Okay, kind of a speck. Yeah, well, it, yeah, at this resolution, it's a speck. When they zoomed in, though, they got this. It's a little fuzzy, but I'd say that's a shark. And not just any shark. If you look at this other satellite photo I brought, it was taken at the same resolution of a school bus yard in nearby Sao Paulo. Now, those are 40-foot buses, and when you compare them next to the first photo, I'd say that's a 70-foot shark. All right, let's ask the obvious first question here. Do you really think that this is the same animal that was spotted two months earlier on the other side of the ocean at Cape Verde? Look, that's a 3,000-mile trip, and, you know, it sounds like a lot, but great whites have been tracked going 1,500 miles in a month, so for Megalodon, that would be nothing. Also, sharks are known to revisit old haunts. Uh, great whites, for instance, have been tagged leaving the east coast of the U.S., going on a random winding trip through the North Atlantic, and then returning a year later, almost to the day, to the same spot that they were tagged. So similar behavior from Megalodon makes complete sense. If, indeed, this is Megalodon. I wish I could be a pirate again. You do? Yeah. How long were you a pirate? I was a long time ago when you were alive, and then I shrunk into a little kid. And I never could get a, be a pirate again. Dream signs you should never ignore. Losing teeth. Pregnancy. Falling in a hole. Dreams about snakes. Dreams of your childhood home. But I'll have to get surgery to remove all this excess skin first. Once I get that, I'll be able to see what I'm doing in bed. <laughs> uh... right... Chris was my only client that gave me that kind of unwanted attention, so I was able to tolerate it for a long time. As annoying as he was, I was genuinely proud of him, and I didn't want to break his heart and send him back into whatever depression got him to be so big in the first place. He then got on the treadmill and started with some light jogging as I instructed. With every stride forward, I could see his excess skin flopping around, like someone shaking out a blanket. Our goal was to get him under 300 pounds so we could get the skin removal that would bring him down to 250 or less. Then at that point he would start taking care of his own routine. It was around the time he was getting very close to the 300 mark when my birthday started drawing near again. Chris liked to give me things, and this year was no exception. I was spotting him doing some shoulder presses with dumbbells when he suggested that he buy me an expensive purse. I told him not to spend his money on stuff like that and get something special or meaningful. 
He seemed to take my suggestion well and carried on working out. On the day of my birthday, I had an appointment with Chris. When I first saw him, I noticed he was carrying a box covered in wrapping paper. But what really drew my attention was something else entirely. I couldn't pinpoint it right away, but there was definitely something different about him. He looked tired, but at the same time significantly slimmer than the last time I saw him. That's when he greeted me by saying happy birthday. I asked him if he ended up getting the surgery, to which he responded vaguely, mostly beating around the question and changing the subject back to my birthday. Chris then handed over the gift and asked me to open it. I took it and started tearing off the wrapping paper. So for no reason, I've decided to make some piranha solution, which is probably one of the angriest liquids that you can make in the lab. To do this, I just have to start with some concentrated sulfuric acid and then carefully add 30% hydrogen peroxide. It's important that I do this very carefully and to never add too much peroxide because it can actually become explosive. It also gets really hot and this mixture is able to destroy most organic things. 
I always find it fun to add stuff like paper to it because it just instantly turns it into carbon and then it vaporizes it into CO2 gas. In the past, I've also done it with things like a fortune cookie and it was able to completely destroy it in seconds. I also did it on a much larger scale and I was able to dissolve an entire hot dog, which was kind of terrifying. Drugs, alcohol,